Bola Vinaka and welcome to Close Up. There's no doubt that we in the Pacific continue to feel the effects of changing climatic conditions. And with this in mind, the media plays an important role, especially in raising awareness on climate change. Tonight on Close Up, the mic and camera is on those that cover stories on climate change, the journalists. It's a topic that's gripped the world even more so, especially in the Pacific. From rising sea levels, heat waves to coastal erosion are some of the stories the media publish in an effort to raise awareness on this global phenomenon. A Pacific geojournalism workshop was recently held in Suva, where journalists attended the three-day workshop to broaden their knowledge on climate change reporting. Getting the information, the right angles to the story, what to focus on and who to speak to are ways in which journalists go about getting information on climate change. Climate change is a very complex issue. Uh, it's affecting the lives and livelihoods of Pacific Islanders, um, especially in low-lying atoll islands. It's very important to make sure that the people whose lives are affected by climate change, by the adverse impacts of climate change, actually know what's happening. And we see the role of the journalist as that conduit, as the messenger in a sense, to relay the information on climate change to the communities in the Pacific. So it's very important that journalists do cover climate change and cover it in a way that can be digested and can be received in a manner that's easy to understand by our communities in the Pacific. The issues surrounding climate change needs more attention and this is where the media plays a key role. It's also the human interest stories which the media will need to tell. Some of the ways that journalists can simplify their reporting is by understanding climate change themselves. So if you understand the issue and the complexity of it then you have a, a better idea of how to relay it in a simple way. So for instance, um, if you look at um, intensifying heat uh, or the temperatures of the oceans are you know, becoming hotter. So how I said it just now is simple enough. So it doesn't need to be you know, um, relayed in a scientific manner whatsoever. You can bring in the scientists to explain in detail why it's gotten to that stage. But the easiest way to convey information on, on climate change is to make it very simple. Do it in a way that a farmer can understand, that a fisherman or fisherwoman can understand. It doesn't have to be complicated. In-depth reporting and simplifying stories on climate change is an important component that journalists need to focus on while publishing climate change related stories. But this, more often than not, is a challenge. Right now, we have more data about environmental change than ever before. We have satellites uh, constantly monitoring the Earth. We have open data platforms from the UN, from national governments, from scientists. Uh, these are all some of the sources of information, and yet our ability to respond and understand this information is not always uh, at the same level as the amount of information. And so the role of the journalists, uh, in my understanding, and I, I believe the goal of this workshop is to convey um, how a journalist can use data to simplify the story by providing key information about trends that affect people's lives and to do it in a way that's visual because people often understand visuals in a way that they have a hard time describing in words. Understanding climate change and its issues is also something the journalists need to do themselves before reporting on it. 
Knowing the basics of climate change reporting will be useful for journalists, especially when they compile their stories. For me, going back, I think it was like 2006, 2007, when the world started talking about something called climate change. And yeah, I, I, I kind of shy away from it because I didn't understand it. So it, it is through trainings like this that I get to, okay, so this is climate change. Now this is affecting people on the islands, particularly in the Pacific. It's very important because they said we are the frontline states. In other words, uh, any slight rise on sea level, that's going to affect the whole entire Pacific because most of us live by the coast. So trainings and attending of uh, international conferences on climate change kind of bring the news back home to our people to, so they can understand it better and they know what they'll do when, when that happens. More can still be done by journalists when covering climate change stories and over the years the media coverage has improved significantly. For local journalists the challenge is also the lack of funding when trying to cover climate change stories especially in remote villages. You are involved in it. It's a story of company that you are you're also an, a, 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 an actor or actress in it. Eh? Uh, I say that remembering that in 2008, I was still writing for the magazine, and uh, we did a cover story, and we call it the, the Pacific Issue of the Year, 2008, and it was uh, climate change. And I remember taking a copy of the story to a international conference that I attended, and they were not very impressed. They were saying, why are you a journalist getting involved in, in saying that climate change is real, climate change is going to affect the Pacific. Because at that time, they said the science was not definite in it. But it's very hard to detach yourself, uh, being objective, uh, and trying to suppress your emotions like, hey, this is our livelihood, this is our future, this is our vanua. I'm going to lose it if the, 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 particularly the polluters of the world don't do anything with climate change. Journalists continue to try and provide an insight into climate change in the country, attending climate change workshops, meetings and visiting villages who may be affected by climate change are ways that journalists come up with stories for climate change. It is important to cover climate change related issues because and it goes towards efforts to raise awareness, educate, educate people about climate change. When educating people about climate change, you um, not only help them understand uh, the causes of climate change, you also help them understand the consequences. They are able to make informed decisions. They are able to um, adapt to the climate change, impact of climate change, and, and hopefully encourage them to, to um, adopt sustainable lifestyles that will help curb the, the impact of climate change. Many journalists do admit that more needs to be done on raising awareness on climate change as local communities become increasingly vulnerable. However, climate change stories are often overlooked. Most of these stories are usually pushed to the side. It's maybe it's the lack of awareness, huh? uh, people not understanding that it's an issue that's here. It's happening here in Fiji. It's a sort of, it's not an abstract idea, it's concept. It's happening in Fiji, it's happening on our doorstep. People, there's just less, people are not bothered about climate change. We are more interested, I think, in politics. Eh? Politics is right up there, but the climate change. Um, if in politics, the people uh, who are there affected by climate change, Politicians, what they should be doing is looking at those people affected by climate change. With this being a reality in most newsrooms, the journalists are still determined to tell the human interest side of these stories. Climate change is not just about rising sea levels, coastal erosion, food security or destruction left behind from severe natural disaster. It's about a change in the way of life which Fijians across the country are experiencing due to a global environmental issue it has no control over. How we uh, can write uh, and make our stories more interesting, especially our vernacular paper. If you look at uh, Shantidut or Nailalakai, 
um, our readers are different, and uh, our readers, uh, we know, need um, uh, need to uh, have it in a very simple form. So uh, this workshop uh, has, um, you know, has taught me what are some of the angles I should be uh, concentrating on, and um, how we can make it more interesting. You know, before uh, we used to, uh, you know, ignore climate change issues, but since this is an issue which is uh, of great concern. Uh, to our country, I think it's very important uh, for us, especially, you know, to go in depth, analyze data, and then, um, you know, write a better story in a very simple form which our readers can understand. The challenge with climate change stories is that many do not see it as a savvy story that would make it to the front page of a newspaper or the lead story of a news bulletin. This is a challenge journalists experience when bringing issues related to climate change. Because climate change affects everyone in the Pacific and as a student journalist we need to know more about reporting on issues such as climate change in the Pacific. But one of the challenges that we face um, is um, coming up, uh, addressing people, approaching people uh, about climate change because when we approach people about it, there isn't much interest in uh, about climate change. They'd rather talk about something else rather than climate change because it's a it's a really uh, big issue because there isn't much um, uh, reporting on uh, climate change because uh, there would be more on uh, advertisements and business because that's what sells in the papers. But when it comes to climate change, there isn't much. Attending workshops covering more meetings on climate change, talking to those affected by climate change and experts in the climate change field are ways journalists around the country are upskilling themselves. A workshop like this, we come to um, improve uh, uh, reporting on uh, climate change issues. Uh, we share experiences um, for those who have gone uh, to cover the international fora. They come and um, share with us the, the, the experience of uh, covering uh, uh, climate change uh, negotiation at uh, international level, like the COP um, 21 in uh, Paris and the upcoming one in uh, uh, Marrakesh in, in Morocco. But uh, for the local uh, journalists in Fiji, uh, they've done enough, but uh, we need more stories uh, turning out from the newsrooms. The need to do more stories on the changing climate has been stressed by journalists themselves. When analyzed, at least 10 stories are covered by the mainstream media when it comes to climate change. Earlier this week, a group of journalists who were attending a Pacific geojournalism workshop visited Ndaku village in Tailevu. This was the perfect opportunity for journalists who were attending the climate change workshop to witness firsthand what the villagers were going through. For most of the local journalists, this is something they have to do before covering any story in local villages. The journalists also tour the village and are told that rising sea levels is the big challenge Daku villagers face. The village had also built a man-made seawall. Meters above mean sea level, this level here. So the 1.5 would be about 18 inches below that. Uh, people ask us whether we will lift the, all the homes. We say no, we'll keep it as they are. But we build a road deck and the front gates to stop the water coming in. I love the rainwater go. The first hand experience for the journalist is the most important part for them when compiling their stories. The site visit to Daku village was very good and informative. Um, I feel that today demonstrated the value of why journalists should go to the community to seek the stories on climate change. We were at a village who are experiencing 
you know, the impacts of climate change um, due to sea level rise, but also because they are located on a much, uh, you know, on a low lying um, area in Fiji. Um, it demonstrated the need for journalists to speak to those facing these issues. Um, and today was an excellent way of hearing from the people who are suffering um, as a result of climate change, but also seeing firsthand the impacts of climate change on our communities in the Pacific. However, it may not be that easy for some journalists when they try to cover climate change stories. There are, of course, challenges to uh, getting journalists to go to the communities, to go to these areas that are affected and to get the stories. These challenges include funding, um, time, um, but also interest of the journalists. So some of the ways we can overcome that is seeking opportunities with uh, organizations like the Earth Journalism Network, um, Internews, or getting projects funded, getting together like what we did today, um, and going out as a group to get the, the information and also to see the communities affected. Um, other ways of, of covering it is to go with NGOs who have projects in these villages, go with the development partners and donors, because um, they will be happy to take a journalist along to cover those issues. While scientists and experts are busy analyzing the science of this global phenomenon, people living in communities are the first to experience the changes. When you go out into the field and you see the people who are impacted by climate change, the audience is able to relate. People don't relate well to CO2. They don't relate well to industrial emissions. They're invisible, they're far away. But the people who experiences the, the impacts of those uh, emissions, of this, of this change, that's relatable to the audience. And when you start with the community and you start with the questions that they ask and the issues that they face, you're able to humanize the story, to show the actual um, result of climate change. It's not about the science or the policy, but the people. The trip for the group of journalists to Ndaku village has also opened their eyes. I'd say that it was a, a special experience for me. This is the, my first trip to Fiji. I, I, I help a lot of journalists around the world, but this is my first trip here to this country, and uh, it was a really valuable experience just in my life to be a part of the, the ceremony, the kava ceremony, to bring me in and to bring all of us into the community um, to provide that acknowledgement and that understanding of each other, like how the, the scene is set. So I think that is a very important piece of context. But in terms of the specifics for climate change, you have a group of people who are facing sea level rise. And they've felt the impacts already. They've had um, their homes flooded. They've had um, you know, their crops uh, weakened. And they're doing something about it. Because it affects uh, everyone, so we have to do our stories on because it touches everybody. So the human angle uh, should should be there um, because of the, the the cyclone that hit us uh, in February this year. That really has a, a lot to tell us eh, about the human angle of the story. I mean, when covering. Um, climate uh, change stories, uh, whether here or abroad. It's important for journalists because um, it's, it's a, something, it's a phenomenon that affects people, affects all of us. So when it affects people, then that's where journalists need to come in and, and, and then explain what climate change is all about, being a new phenomenon. There's a lot of science involved. So it's important for journalists to, first of all, in order to report accurately, responsibly, about climate change, they need to understand the whole works about climate change, particularly the science. Kind of difficult for many of journalists like myself to understand the science, but uh, the basics of climate change you need to know, and that's why workshops like this, training like this is very helpful. Understand what it's all about so that you can explain it better, report it accurately to, to your audience, whether it be the readers of uh, newspapers or television viewers, or even your listeners on read.
And that's close up this evening. For any questions or comments, email us close up at fijitv.com.fj. Until next week, have a good evening.